before we get any further, we have edited this structure, so let's save it to disk. Now, first of all, I suggest you use the save as command as often as you can and save increments of your structure. So, for example, let's choose the target folder. This structure will be saved as lava01. After further editing, you will save it as lava02 and so on and so forth. Don't worry about the disk space because the structure files are not very big. In this way you keep record of the various stages of your work and if one structure file gets corrupted you can always resort to a recent previous one. Furthermore, let me point out that the structure file that I've just saved is not an actual animation movie file like a QuickTime one. It is an automatic proprietary format file that can be used to create an animation later on, but it's not the animation itself. I can visualize its properties. As you can see, it's an automatic file type and the file size is small, it's only 33 kilobytes. Anyway, we have a few keyframes and it's now time to decide how long our animation, the animation that interpolates between them, is going to be. One way to do that is by using this little watch icon. Click and drag to change the duration of the animation, which is indicated in minutes, seconds and frames. Another way to change the duration of the animation is to use the Animation and Camera Setup dialog box. This dialog box gives you access to various controls, but I want to show you now the duration in minutes, seconds and frames. For example, let's set the duration to 0 minutes, 4 seconds, and 0 frames. This little window gives you a chance to see a small preview of your animation. This real-time animation preview is performed at reduced size or low resolution due to the computational complexity of Artmatic. When a keyframes based animation is created, it is as if an invisible hand is moving each slider from the settings of one keyframe to the setting of the next keyframe. And the rate at which the changes take place is determined by the movie's duration. the animation and create a real QuickTime movie file, click on the QuickTime export button to open up the export dialog box. You need to choose a suitable frame rate for your final movie file. Typically this will be 30 frames per second for an NTSC video project or 25 frames per second for a PAL video project. If you know that the rendering process will take a long time, you may want to render this animation in chunks, specifying the time codes you want to start and end the rendering. You will also choose a suitable output size, as well as the other settings in this window. These movie settings, as well as the compression settings, do have important ramification and implications. I suggest you read the appendix on QuickTime in the Artmatic user manual to find out more. When you're ready to start the rendering process, click on OK. You will choose the location on the disk where you want the QuickTime file to be saved and it will also specify a name for the QuickTime video clip that will be created. In this case I will choose lava01 underscore rendered01. Automatic starts drawing the frames of your animation and you can see a frame counter down here. When you render an animation to QuickTime, this can be done at full resolution if you choose it that way in the export settings. Rendering may take some time, depending on how fast your computer is and on the computational complexities of the particular Artmatic system you are dealing with. In fact, the reason I earlier suggested you to split the rendering process in chunks 
for example chunks of 10 or 20 seconds each, is to minimize the chances of something going wrong during an otherwise very long rendering session, for example a power cut or a computer crash or similar calamities. At the end of the rendering process you can find the QuickTime video clip saved on disk and you can view it in QuickTime Player or edit it or you can incorporate it in a video editing montage in Final Cut or similar applications. To recap, in this tutorial I showed you two simple strategies to create the keyframes for your animation. The first one is to explore the inner components of this tree structure, find out what parameters you want to alter to create the keyframes. The second strategy utilizes the mutation dialog from which you can choose keyframes that Artmatic generates for you.